You're watching Greater Brockton. Uh, this is a special candidates edition of Greater Brockton. Uh, normally we have nonprofits on uh, and we're still doing that, but we're making sure we get all the candidates, all eight of the candidates for council at large in the different races for mayor, school committee, and city council. I have here in studio, Scott Hall. Hey, Scott, welcome, good to see you. Sure. Um, we're gonna do the Scott Hall story. Why? Did you run? Why do you want to be elected a uh, councilor at large? And we'll talk some of the issues that you're hearing out on the street when you're out campaigning, when you're talking to people about the election. So I guess my first question is why do you want to be a city councilor? Um, well, I would never apply for a job I didn't think I couldn't do. So um, I'm really like, I don't like saying I'm running because I don't really run. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, you and belly. me both. Neither one I, of us run. I should, but I know it's bad on the knees too. I try to walk. Okay. But, um, uh, I'm on the ballot for council at large, uh, fifth on the ballot. Um, I just want to, you know, I feel as though it's sort of like a lot of things are stagnant right now. A lot of things are just. Uh, I I'm really doing it to get more. I'm hoping new voters vote. That's the main thing I'm trying to attract to the, the camp, you know, the whole mm -hmm. election season. Um, I want to see more people vote. I want to see more people give a crap about the issues. Um, one of the great things about, you know, running is I'm actually learning so much about the city that I had no idea about. I'm seeing things from whole new perspectives. Things, you know, I was pretty opinionated about, uh, uh, you know, I've learned to, like, I, I still have my opinion, yet there are things that I didn't think about that actually make sense, too. Like, like for example, the, the two ways in, in Brockton, yeah. there's a lot to think about when it comes to that. You know, I used to joke around and say, give me a six-pack and a can of yellow paint and I, I'll make it happen tonight. And... uh there's like, you know, loading docks for when, you know, we bring in stuff to the stores, what kind of stores are going to be there. Sure. Um, you know, parking's definitely a big issue when we do the two-way two thing. So you're running citywide. Councilors mm -hmm. at large are similar to the mayor. You run citywide, the whole, all seven wards, all 28 precincts. Yep. So you're out there talking to people, knocking on doors, you had to get your signatures to get on the ballot. What's the number one issue you're hearing about? What are you hearing from the voters? Maybe the newer voters, maybe the ones that feel disenfranchised and haven't voted before. What are you what are you hearing? Well, a lot of a lot of people I know aren't even registered. They really gave up on the whole process. So, you know, they don't even want to vote. They don't want to hear it. You know, they feel as though it's just too negative and But you got them to register, right? Uh, well, I Some say I'm not twisting anybody's arm, but I, you know, okay. I, I'm working on that. Um, but I, you know, I say you got to vote. You know, it's important. Um, I'd say it's a, uh, you know, the public safety, tax rates, and probably, you know, a lot of people feel as though you know government from the top down is corrupt, and you know, to a certain degree, it is. Um, do you agree with them? I, I mean, I've seen a lot of corruption. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of um, apathy too. Maybe not so much corruption, but that you know, a lot of status quo going on, a lot of mediocrity going on. Well, I hear from my students. I don't have a reason to vote. I said, well, if you don't vote, yeah. you you can talk, you can complain, but I learned a lesson a long time ago. I live on one street. They paved the street next to me. They didn't pave my street. So I wanted to dig deeper into that. They paved the street next to me because nine out of 10 people on that street voted. And on my street, four out of 10 people voted. Yeah. So double the number of people voted, that street got paved. So I learned a lesson. So when we went back to get my street accepted, because it had to be accepted, there are a lot of streets that aren't accepted and you can't do anything with those streets until they're accepted. I, I learned about that. Um, we, we had the council at large debate, okay? You were part of it, all eight candidates were there. We talked about different issues. Um, big issue that there's a lot of money on the table for it, if it goes through, is to buy 
the desalinization plant. You were pretty clear on that. I just want to give you a chance to reiterate your position if you want to, that just, just clarify it for me. What, where do you stand on that? Well, right, right off the bat, you know, I think corporate welfare, I think um, I'm willing to hear both sides of the argument, though. Like, I, you know, I'm hearing the MWRA thing. I know there were reasons we didn't do it before. We don't really, like, I need to learn more about that too, but um, I've been spending a lot of time learning about the desalination plant. And like I generally think um, government shouldn't be, shouldn't be in the business of buying businesses. Um, right, that's what you said during the debate. Um, and we, we need to know more about the desalination, we, you know, we're just buying something that, you know, there's not like we need a real thorough independent investigation, inspection into the place, what really needs to be maintained because it's what been up and running now for maybe... Uh, 10, 12 years. Yeah. Something um, like that. So there's some wear and tear going, even though we never used any water until Well, it's recently. like buying a house. You, you need yeah. a home inspection when you're buying a house, right? So yeah. you, you're saying you want to know what the condition of it is before you... Yeah. I mean, we, I think I, everybody pretty much in the room agreed that they thought the price was too high. The price that's being proposed yeah. is too high. So you're saying you would you, you, you studied it, but you have an open mind about it. You, 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 you don't really want the city in the, the water business, so to speak. But if it, if, if it made sense and you were convinced the other way, you might... Well, I, I know, like, say, for whatever happens, something happens where we don't have Silver Lake as a source. Right. I mean, it's not going to be a fun time in Brockton. No. It's, you know, so, I mean, the MWRA, you know, I know there's a lot of bureaucracy behind it. I've heard people say anywhere from 5 to 20 years it'll take. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe I've heard people say, too, that if we work with the governor and the current administration, we can streamline that process for getting the MWRA through. The desal just it just there's a lot of shady things that seem to be going on. I think if we, I think we have leverage like where we can rene, you know renegotiate the contract even though you know the the city solicitor and stuff and other lawyers that they brought in say it's an ironclad contract. There is. You know, just because a, a few lawyers say something is true, it doesn't mean it's true. Now, um, now, you've been involved in some of the different issues. You, you, you talk. You were talking taxes. I know. I've seen you at city council tax hearings. Some of the people that don't live here anymore, who are gone, were pretty vocal about the tax rates. You were at those city council yeah. meetings. How do you feel about? Taxes overall, do you think they're too high? Do you think we, we, we need to reclassify the tax system? What, what are your thoughts? I, I think for businesses, generally, it's, it's too high of a rate. Some businesses, it's ideal for them to come in. It, it you know accommodates their business needs and they can handle the higher tax rate. I think for companies, like, like one thing I learned recently, uh, I saw a show that the mayor did. It was... Um, about I didn't know you know those lemons. Mm -hmm. What's it? Concord. Concord Foods. Yeah. Yeah. They they make those lemons, and I imagine as the rate, water rate goes up, that's going to cut into the mm -hmm. their bottom line. So businesses like that, where you know, or where there's a lot of cleaning or a lot of use of water, I don't think that's going to be uh, a good move for them to come here what? because of like if we start using more diesel. Like, we can only use right now 5 million gallons a day at most without the pipes bursting, everything full throttle because it takes, I don't know if it's the high tide or the low tide. Um, I used to know, but um, I'm fuzzy on that detail. But 2.5 million gallons it takes during that tide, and that tide it happens twice a day. So 5 million gallons hmm. can be sent to us right now. They would have to create a whole nother uh, storage container. And I know the pipe has a 10 million gallon uh, bottleneck. Like, okay. So, 
But when they say that, they don't really say that. It's only $5 million that they can pull from the Taunton River a day right now. Wow. So even if that was the case... And so the lake went down. We'd still, kind of, we'd be hurting. We we'd be, we'd figure out how to survive. I'd say, but we'd still be hurting. So, any other big issues? Um, I got the five minute cue, so I want to make sure oh, I got sorry, a couple of minutes. minutes. I, I I want to make sure I got a couple of minutes for you to wrap. No, actually, I have three. So right. I'm, if if you want to wrap kind of into your closing statement, what you want to do if you get elected? how to get in touch with you to help you, and uh, you, you, you take the rest of the time. I just need about 30 seconds at the end, and I, I can, I'll, I'll hold up a finger, and you can know that I need to wrap it up. So. Well, the other thing with the diesel, um, I think we need full disclosure from like who were the initial investors and why the contract was so one-sided at the beginning, and we need the whole story to really figure out if we should be investing more. There's a thing called like a law of dimin what's that? Um, diminishing returns? Yeah, or, or costs, or where you basically like, you gotta cut the cord and call, call your losses. So we gotta figure all that out, um, but we're still gonna need water. Um, okay, tell the, tell the Scott Hall story for two minutes and you get the final two minutes. All right, so I'm a computer programmer. I've been doing it for about 18 years. I sort of did a lot of activism, a lot of filming of stuff, like he said, at the tax things. They were very interesting. I enjoyed it. It was very entertaining. Like, there were a lot of, a lot of good points being made. And, you know, they, I want to see more of that where people actually show up to, you know, government events and speak their mind and give their perspectives and it did make a difference um, they actually didn't go up on the tax rates as much um, however we have a, a serious issue with spending more than we're bringing in and we need to alleviate all of that um, and one of the things I can see as a remedy is better software, more integrated software um, between departments, um, more accountability, uh, knowing what we actually have as a, as a city, as far as assets go, like, you know, count everything, count, you know, what we have for lights. We need to do all that. I don't know how well the job they're doing right now. I've been going to IT board meetings Mm -hmm. And they talk a lot about, like, the video cameras across the city and stuff like that. But I think um, more scrutiny over what we have for inventory and will help us figure out uh, how to predict uh, costs in the So you can bring your software skills to, you know, your computer skills to yeah. the table to, to benefit. I got the rap sign, so... It's over? It just... just Mm. The last part is vote for me in like 10 seconds or less. All right, Scott Hall dot vote. Oh, man, I went way over. But I, I think um, with the software, I know when we're getting bamboozled as far as the software. I can tell you, you know, that it's not a good idea and it's costing way too much. Um, Scott Hall dot vote. You can reach me at 508-583-4777. Um, Easy to remember. Number five on the ballot, that went through way too quick. Number five is a good spot to be in. You never know. you got to get four, but number five is good. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more coverage of election 2017, but most of all, November 8th, vote. Do your civic duty. Be the city of champions. Thank you.